How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Thursday's Weekly Access Stream. My name is Sammy. Appreciate you joining me for a really, really special stream. One I've been looking forward to for quite some time now because we do have the CEO of Dream Loop Games, one of the main men on the project, inescapable, no work, no rules, no rescue. Yoni, thank you for joining me so much. Yeah, it's it's great to be here. It's uh, it's been a while since I saw your face. Uh, well, I know. I still well, say. I, I, uh, <laughs> sorry, I still say like when man, I was like really surprised that we were at um, we're at uh, God Anime Expo 2022. I was like, man, this is the cool part of my job. I get to talk to people about like who make games. That was like always the thing. I was like, oh, you know. You're a kid and you envision these things, you know, just playing games or but then I got to talk to you. It was like that was that was a really cool part of my life. So it is great to like talk to you again. Talk to cool people. <laughs> Lately I've been able to talk to movie people and that's yeah. kinda of, at the same time I'm like, hey, it's really cool to like meet you i've seen you in many movies and then they like yeah it's really cool to meet you because your industry makes like so much more money than ours so. <laughs> is that true now is that yeah, true it's, it is true gaming industry makes like uh, uh money off i think it was like five hollywoods or something um that's sort of like how i got into it. that's how like the the weird transition of me going from being a person who played video games to a person who liked competitive video games, who went into commentating competitive video games to getting to this job. Uh, I kind of like to ask you sort of, maybe not to give you alert to ask for the same in-depth pathway, but like what got you into that pathway of like making games? Um, I did make my first games when I was like 13 or something uh, with Click and Play and Game Factory and what were those tools back in the day. Pretty horrible <laughs> right. stuff, but uh, you could at least the, the same basic <laughs> ideas of like, you know, uh, put, implementing your uh, designs and someone else's rip art because you're a teenager who don't know how to draw and so forth. Right, yeah. But um, about, honestly, I didn't like design games until i got like maybe my like second degree uh from university mm -hmm. um like a little bit over 10 about 10 years ago but i have been a um, like role-playing dungeon master slash game master for 23 years now really so yeah i've been i've been doing that quite a long time recent Recent year I've been taking a bit of hiatus, but uh, before that it was basically about a weekly thing, talking about like uh, four to six hours a week. At some point I reached the like 5,000 hours on the table um, and I got to hang out and I'm, I'm good friends, for example, with like um, uh, how to be a great GM uh, guys and, and so forth. So I'll, I'm being able to be on a lot of designing stories. I think that's okay. kind of like a, a little bit relevant for Inescape. Absolutely. But uh, I've, I've been always kind of like a storyteller mm -hmm. and um, I learned quite quickly that if I don't make uh, stories in the table that are meaningful for the players. Right. And it's, it's I could even say, um, tailored for the players. Right. They're not gonna be interested, and it's it's something we could probably get get to that a little bit later. But it's sure. something that inescapable is as well. It's uh, whoever you are in there buying the game or uh, like picking it up. It's mm -hmm. it's probably trying. The game is trying to be tailored for. You. Oh yeah, it's. Um, I think it's a a little bit of an underrated uh, skill set in yeah. our. In, in our industry because uh, a lot of our uh, our industry is still young gaming mm -hmm. is still young compared True. to other industry yeah but uh, a lot of our industry has become more of uh, the like level design oriented or the monetization level uh, the design uh, oriented it's not so much about the story design uh, oriented um, uh, industry and I think most of the games either that lack on that side are mm -hmm. the ones that uh, usually don't make it that far. They they stay with with one one game. And again, I'm hoping that Inescapable will will get like a 
more games in the series, but hey, next week is gonna be <laughs> the first uh, real test on that. Right. But uh, I, I loved when you mentioned that you wrote characters and the uh, players got attached to them and they uh, they really enjoyed them. And it's the best part is then to kill those characters. <laughs> <laughs> kill to literally kill the characters that the I players could are never. enjoying. Oh, you're stronger you watch, than me. I could never. <laughs> and you watch the players literally tear up on the table, no. <laughs> understanding that the cat, that the NPC, that the NPC that they build friendship over three oh years, like every weekend, is now dead. And they and and the amount of hatred that that will build up within them for whoever did it, I. Uh, I think that's uh, partially partially why we went with this kind of a oh game. Oh my god. Would you mind if you explain sort of the general basic topic of Inescapable and how you came to get to that topic for the game? Yeah. So the whole story started when my friend uh, Tien, uh, who's also a streamer, was uh, started streaming Danganronpa for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was moderated for him, so I was there in the stream and he asked me the question that probably a lot of people ask, like, oh, as, as we know that this turn gonna turn into a killing game, can I actually affect on who gets killed by who? Mm. And I, of course, answered like, no, it's a completely linear story. Your interest is, or your gameplay is completely somewhere else. Right. And then, then after the first stream, I was like, I was, I was um, close to stream and I was there um, walking to get something to eat. And I was like, but could you? <laughs> Could you make a game uh, like uh, Danganronpa where you can actually affect on who gets murdered and who doesn't and who did it, etc., etc.? Right. And um, I, I took a piece of paper even in that evening and I started kind of like a, you know, starting out uh, with the idea. And I was like, oh, sure, you can. Uh, I, I'm a GM. I have created a tree structure for my games before that right. if players go here, they decide this, they start to go this way and this way. And I realized very quickly that uh, after like three murders, you have 16 different uh, branching paths that cannot be cannot be um, the same because uh, different people have died been killed by different, different people. Right. I'm like, that, that means that I, I would need to, for uh, three murders to happen, I would need to write 16 games. I'm like, that cannot work, and I, I think that's why they didn't do it. Fast forward something like three months and many uh, paper uh, drafts later, I was like, no, you can actually do this. You can actually, um, uh, at that time it had already a little bit shifted on like what exactly I was looking for in terms of the, uh, the principle. Mm -hmm. But I was like, yes, you can actually create a game where you make a bunch of decisions. Right. Actually, I, I, I dare to say Inescapable has the most player decision making in all visual novels. And then you end up on completely different story based on your decision. But it's not, it's by God, it's not through branching three, uh, branching a three structure. Uh, I was going to ask maybe like if there was sort of that kind of challenge that, that was coming from making the game if there was any sort of challenges that came from that were unique to making inescapable unique for inescapable of course um like it was a game that we had not worked uh with before mm -hmm. um we work with a lot of uh um like client games throughout the years and uh we work of course console side of things were no brainer for us we were we gone through console certification so so many times right but for example stuff like uh, I see Ninfia in the chat here uh, who is one of our voice actors um, like voice acting was mm -hmm. completely new field for us we had done some voiceover sometimes for the games that we have worked on mm -hmm. but none of had uh, none of us had ever directed voice oh, actors for es especially uh, with I have never uh, met in person any of the voice actors of Inescapable. But uh, yet we were able to get the process to work so that uh, they did uh, create uh, line delivery. Uh, I did not even like di directly, directly um, 
go and direct any of the recordings. Our uh, voice, uh, we created a process where our voice actors had a certain version of the game where mm. they could be uh, easily go and play the moment in the game that they were going to be voice acting. So they could basically play the, uh, play the game that they're going to be voice acting, then record it, send it to our way, and we would uh, plug it in. That is very cool. So they almost got to see, they got to maybe envision how the line is, spo uh, is going to be said, plug it into the game, and then see if it actually fit rather than sort of doing that process on your side and then asking for maybe a different, uh, uh, maybe asking for like a different line read afterwards and doing that over and over again. Rather, you gave them sort of the opportunity to find their voice within the characters themselves. Yeah, it, it, was, a, it was a really cool process and we, uh, we kind of had to figure that all uh, on the fly. Mm -hmm. uh, it again helps that uh, Dreamloop is like filled with insanely talented people that we have, and uh, uh, the level of like a pro skills that uh, that our team has is is great, and uh, we've been able to uh, well, learn everything really fast. Right. Like a Google shit. That is very cool, though. I think uh, you sort of uh, do it a little bit like I do, where you kind of work with the tools that you know and you try to mold them into something that you can use, rather than sort of sometimes learning something maybe way more specific and then using that because it's a tool that's already created it's easier for your brain to use something that you've used before because i like you not not for video game making but i use excel sheets for a lot of stuff so i mean excel is underrated tool 100 um, percent absolutely like, you know, kid, kids go do excel not drugs <laughs> um Cool. So, I mean, that's, uh, I'm going to have a, so I'm going to have a couple personal questions for you from like stuff that we've gone along and I'm, I'm just curious about as we go. Uh, so like things I wrote as I had questions, I was like, oh, maybe I'll ask him this as we go along. So uh, this is just going to be maybe like a little bit more shallow than that. I'm just very curious. Uh, when you wrote, uh, or I guess when your team wrote, did you write in and finish or did you write in English? So the fun, fun thing is, so our writing team, uh, I'm the only Finn. Oh, okay. Uh, then we had uh, Katarina, who's mm. from Portugal. She, she is the mummy for uh, our Francisca. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had Vlad, who's, uh, um, who's from Romania. Okay. And uh, then we had Faye, who is from Italy. So oh, we had, wow. when you think about the cast of Inescapable, right. I think it reflects really greatly our writing team and our uh, development team in general. In our development team, I think we had like seven nationalities, uh, to which most were from, almost all were from Europe. And you can see that in the uh, Inescapable's cast as well. We wanted to as well make a European uh, cast to be able to uh, reflect kind of like the team that we were working the game with. Sure. It's kind of like understandable, you know, Dang and, Dang and Rompa is kind of like Japanese students. It's right. probably what their team felt like comfortable telling the story. We want sure. to tell a story about like <clears throat> European, European characters because we have European studio. Right. Absolutely. Um, in, in regards to that, it's, How do I say this? It's like you want to make characters that you have. You want to make characters that represent somebody because those are the people that you can relate the most to. And your best experiences you have to create characters that resemble somebody are yourselves. And. That's that's really cool. It's very cool to hear that you have like such a multicultural team. I assumed to some degree because Europe in general is so uh, geographically close in comparison to other parts of the world, but I didn't expect it to be so different and so so multicultural. I think that's 
when I look and think about the characters in the game, now that makes a lot more sense, actually. I just never thought about it before, but it makes sense that that's like sort of a reflection of the development team is, is how different and multicultural the characters are themselves. Yeah, and uh, it, it's in the sense um, it, it, it became very, even, even before, mm -hmm. uh, even before we started working on it, I immediately, when I just, uh, the night when I started uh, writing th stuff on paper after mm -hmm. my uh, friend had played uh, Danganronpa on stream, I didn't have a name for characters. I only had nationalities. Mm -hmm. I started off with, yeah, of course the Finn is going to kill the Swede. <laughs> And then uh, French is going to surrender to the Germany. <laughs> and, uh, and that's that's where I started. I literally was like, no, we, we're going to... Uh, uh, this idea starts off with European people. Um, then right. we're going to basically build from there. <laughs> okay. Yoni, this won't be the last time we talk. I am, as a video game fan, so thankful for you to come by, spend so much of your sleep time to uh talk with me about the game and uh i i'm looking forward to the release as am i i think the most of everyone around you <laughs> <laughs> hopefully at least all right thank you yodi i hope you have a good rest of your night all right take care gang have a good one i remember because when we first talked when i was at uh at anime expo 2022 when we talked i really brought it up to him in a way I was like oh like you know I have these thoughts about how the game th is brought up and to you and like this is how I think the game is and they went back to me and they were like no that's exactly how the game is and so to hear about um how decisions are important how your decisions are going to affect the way that the game goes and how um how every decision can you know really be important to how the game progresses how the characters interact to one another um to hear from him by the way that he started writing this game because he saw another game and said i could do that and i have this idea uh that'll be it thank you guys for joining me i really appreciate it this was a, a fun stream to have and i enjoyed so much of it and uh, I appreciate everybody who came coming through. That was a lot of fun. Remember, it is almost the weekend. So go play some video games. I know you guys are all working hard. Go enjoy yourselves for a bit. You deserve it. And hopefully I'll see you guys next week. Take it easy.